There is nothing wrong with your television. We are controlling transmission. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to Brunswick Area Television. Welcome to this month's Salute to Service. Today I have with me Mr. Mark Opalka from Medina. He's a Marine Corps veteran, a Vietnam veteran, and a member of the Disabled American Veterans Chapter 72, right? Yes, thank you. How are you doing, Mark? Okay. Uh, glad we could have you here today. I'm glad to be here. So you're, where are you originally from? From Cleveland. From Cleveland? Grew up in Cleveland, born, born and raised? Yeah, off of uh, West 25th Street. When did you move out here to Medina? Uh, I moved out here uh, 1999. So quite a while ago. Yes, I had sisters living out here. I had a couple, three of my sisters been there like over 30 years. So. Right. So you, um, I know you enlisted in the Marine Corps back yes. in, during the Vietnam War, right? Yeah, I graduated from uh, high school in 67. And I had a, worked in the summertime and uh, I got laid off from my job was a little peeny job, but my dad was a type of man. I, 18, right. you pay rent now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feed you unless you get a job. Right. So I, I was afraid to go home with, for a week without. So my brother lived next door uh, to my dad's house, and he was in the Marines. So he always teased me. You know, I had two brothers in the Army, right. and I had a brother in the Marine Corps, and he was a bad you know thought he was really a bad person you know bad guy you know tough and he said you'd never make the marines he said you're too, too scrawny he said you're too thin <laughs> so i said okay i'll go and join the marines so i did so yeah. you joined the marine. now your brother was in the marine corps back in the 50s right yeah in late 57 he went in uh and he got out in 61. so you so you go down you enlist in the marine corps and you get sent off to i went well it was uh paris island was crowded and they General Stuckter said, uh, I mean, the guy, the, uh, the recruiter said to me, he said, well, you can go in September. We got, I said, I can't. I can go now. Cause you ain't got no rent money, right? I ain't got no <laughs> rent money to give my dad. <laughs> so he sent nine of us from, from the Cleveland area. We went to San Diego. And I said, okay, I've never been to California in my life. Never been out of Cleveland anyway. No, no, the guys that went to Paris Island would say you probably had it a little easier. Yeah, right? they called me Hollywood Marine. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, because I guess Gomer Pyle back then. So how was, um, how was boot camp in, in tough. 1967? Tough. The drill instructors were, you know, tough on you. And they knocked you around. They tried to mentally break you. Mm -hmm. and, but it, in the meantime, it made you strong. It made you work the toughest they got. And you stay together as a team. One guy screws up. Everybody's going to get paid for it. Well, and, and, and it's, uh, you know, the Vietnam War is in full swing in 67. Oh, yeah. And in the Marine Corps, I, you know, you're not going to, you're, you're going to Vietnam. Right, right. So, yeah, so you guys yeah. knew that. So, yeah. so when you enlisted and you know there's a war yeah. going on, you're going to war. What's, yeah. what, what are you thinking about? Well, you know, uh, being a kid, you know, and you, when I was growing up, I played soldiers mm -hmm. and with my buddies, you hit guns and stuff yeah. and the plastic guns, guns and stuff, baby yeah. guns. And I watched a lot of the Marine movies, John Wayne and all that. Combat. Combat. Combat thing. Yeah. Oh, look, this looks like, you know. With Vic Morrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I thought, yeah, all right. I said, I wasn't going to college. So they were going to draft me in here. I was uh, class 1A, right. whatever. And so I figured they would have got me eventually. So go now. And my best friend, uh, he was supposed to go with me, but his mom and dad wouldn't sign. He was 17. He mm -hmm. didn't turn 18 to September. His mom and dad were both World War II Marines. Okay. So, but they wouldn't sign for him. So he went in on his 18th birthday in September. But uh, I went in August. I told him, let me go in and tell you, you know. But uh, I met up with him uh, and I was just finishing radio school. I was going to uh, the staging battalion to go over to Vietnam, and he just got came in for schooling. He right. was an artillery man, so I met up with him for we had a weekend together. But uh, 
I knew, I've been friends with him five years, we were five years old together, and we still, we got 60 years of friendship. Still friends with him? Oh, yeah, he's uh, in the Marine Corps League where, he's the commandant of the Marine Corps League in Brook Park where I belong to. Cool. So, so you, you go to basic training down in, uh, in, in San and Diego. Then, Did you go, I take it you went to AIT down there too? Or Yes, we, yeah, 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 we call it, uh, Advanced infantry Advanced training. Advanced infantry training. So what, what was your primary job when you when you come out of there? I went to a radio, combat radio operator. I went to radio school at Pendleton. And um, that was my primary MOS. So when I got my orders to go to Vietnam, I was stationed at um, was a, sort of an air base. It was called MAG-16, Marble Mountains. It's right outside Da Nang. How many months or how many weeks or days between getting out of AIT and going to Vietnam? Well, Did you come home at all? Or? Yes. Uh, after we finished AIT, we uh, got two weeks. Mm -hmm. I went home. You already it, knew you were going to Vietnam, though, Oh, right? yeah. We have a, we had a boot camp. He gives you your orders, and, and it tells you your job going to be. And, and he makes his comments like, oh, you're a radio operator. You got 13 seconds in combat. Yeah. You're dead. Everybody's looking around. Everybody's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Gotta I, love the drill sergeant. Yeah, huh? right. Yeah. I said, my God, man. Don't anybody live? Yeah. And so um, uh, we went to, uh, to advanced infantry training for four weeks. So it was a total of maybe about uh, 14 to 16 weeks, you know, uh, before I got to come home. And right. it was around Thanksgiving. So I got to spend Thanksgiving. And um, so, did you give your dad any back rent money when you come home, or? Well, you know, he had to pay for my ticket to go back, <laughs> because uh, usually they give you travel pay. Right. Well, my travel pay was maybe uh, two dollars just going from San Diego to Pendleton. Right. So you know, it's like okay, and I got all the way back to Ohio, Ohio and so my dad ended up paying it, but you know, I had to pay it back. Yeah. So, so um, you take off from Pendleton and you go over to Vietnam, and yeah, you're saying we, you were on an air base. Yeah, well, it was a helicopter. We shared it with the army. They had. Um, so you didn't do the radio. You you were radio. Officer. I did some. I I was sent to the the Zool company. I was their company radio operator. We did like little patrols around the area, mm -hmm. and we went up by Marble Mountain at the base of it, and went through there checked out everything, see if everything's cool, because they had 106 team on top. So how'd you get assigned as a gunner on the... On the well, they was Tet offense, mm -hmm. 68, and they couldn't keep up with the with their own people working on the, plant, on the you know, helicopters and the flying. So these guys were exhausted. So they asked for volunteers. So it was an extra $100 combat That's pay. Flight, flight yeah. pay, pay whatever, yeah. 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 So yeah. they took us up. And we had 50 cal machine guns, and they had barrels in the uh, South China Sea there. And they let you shoot, make passes if you were close to them barrels, you qualify. So didn't have to hit the barrels. You didn't have to hit the barrels. And what kind of helicopters were you? Uh, CH-46s. Which is uh, uh, the, the twin, two -wing, twin yeah, rotors. Yeah. yeah, and had a back ramp. Yeah. So um, I went there, you know, and I flew for... A month and a half, and in the meantime, I got shot down three times. I was in a squadron. Must have been. It was called the Purple Fox. It's 364. Each of them sick. 364. So you were over there a year, right? Thirteen months. Thirteen months. In in that year, you were a radio operator for how long? Uh, uh, off and on. Then I went back to the main. I was in a company uh, radio operator. Then when I done, got done flying, they put me into uh, the big So communication. that 13 months, you were only in the helicopter for a couple months. And you got shot down three times. Yes. Well, a couple months was probably long enough, wasn't it? <laughs> Hell yeah, it was, <laughs> was 100, uh, I had 100 combat missions in. Wow, in a couple months. So yeah. those guys were flying, you were right, they're flying their butt off. Yeah, you know, and you got these guys, they're, they're constantly flying, the guys that work on. Right. So, you know, you're talking, rack up a lot so of So what time. were you mostly flying in them things? Troops or We did or? everything. We did resupplying. That's when we, the one time we got shot down, that was the last time. It was like 
no one likes to re, uh, resupply you. It's dull. You're taking water buffaloes. Uh, Sling loading stuff sl underneath. Yeah, and underneath yeah. and dropping it. Well, when we dropped this buffalo, water buffalo off, and we started to go climbing up into the clouds, all of a sudden we had a ping in our transmission pipe. There was transmission fluid running out of it. And the helicopter started to vibrate, so the crew chief went back there and put his thumb to cover up, trying to save the juice in there. So then we come through the clouds and look down. There was an LZ Maxwell, was a 106 team on this mountain top. Mm -hmm. And we hit that mesh, iron mesh pad, and it was like, boy, you know, we, we thought right then when we started going down, you're done. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. Because after so many seconds, the, when you run out of the transmission, the, it just freezes up. It, it? it was, yeah, and this vibration will yeah. split. The helicopter would yeah. just bust It overheats. Down, overheats. And yeah. So I thought, well, this was it, you know. So in the two months you were flying, you got three air medals, yeah. correct? Every 36 combat missions, you got like an air medal. You got your combat, combat air wings. You know, your little flying wings, mm -hmm. you had to have 36 combat missions in it and you had to be, take fire, you know, so on your chopper, so. But you had to fly and that's what I got awarded, you know. So when they told you you were going back to be a radio operator, were you pretty happy? Or did you like to fly? Because well, I know flying is a lot of fun. Even if yeah, you're getting shot at, right, it's still yeah, a lot of fun. You know, what is good about the flying part was like the medevacs and, right. you know, you go to these LZs and you'll sit there and, the, and these pilots and co-pilots, when they do a medevac, they, they always call back to the, the base hospital. We right. drop them off and ask them how they're doing. Right. You know, they hate to lose anybody. Right. And they'll, I mean, they, we flew in some hairy situations, you know, where if you called us, we came in. Right. You know, they right. shot up the smoke and we came in after the, the wounded soldiers, Marines. But... It was interesting. So you come back and you're doing your radio thing for a couple more months, you're 13 yeah. months, and, and you're coming down to that last week. Yes. Any patrols or anything the last no, week? No, no, they, they, you know, they give me a, they give you a, an uh, old-timer uh, old stick. It was like a walking stick. Like a hall pass. Yeah, right. You, you know, you didn't go do nothing. You sit, you know, anything happens, you get rockets and mortars attack, you know. You go in a bunker, you stay there. So was that like your last month or your last couple of weeks? Yeah, but you know, the bad point about we, uh, we got done, we're ready to come home. We were supposed to fly back commercial. Mm -hmm. Well, we were at nighttime on the flight deck in Da Nang, and they were taking incoming fire. So here we are hiding behind our duffel bags right. and stuff. And finally... The, the civilian airline couldn't come in, so they brought a C-130 in. Took you out on C-130. C-130 took us to Okinawa, and that was a one rough ride up there. It was about 13-hour ride. Yeah, that's, they're not comfortable sitting no. in the red strap seats. Right, right. Yeah. And then they said, "Well, if you want to come up and see the cap, the current up here is, see what the cockpit looks yeah. like." Now every guy, you know, now give me a break. You we'll know. just stay back. Yeah. There. But it feels, you know, when that when that plane takes off. Yes, when you're on that air and you're coming back home, you know. <sighs> Big relief. decompress, yeah. Yeah, you know, I was stuck about a week in Okinawa being bumped off of flights. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know there, I don't care, I was going home sooner or later. Right. I'm taking that bird and I'm going yeah. to California with that bird and then from California I'm flying home. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice relief to know no one's out there that wants to kill you, isn't it? Yeah, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> you look at yeah, but then, you know, after you've been there a while, it, everything comes like yeah. natural, you know what I yeah. mean? Uh, we're not like the first, the first two weeks were terrible and the last week. After that, That's what he said. Uh, you you don't get it in the first two weeks or the last week you're there. You know. Any memories of Vietnam that stick with you? Good memories, I mean. I mean, obviously uh, there's some bad ones, but yeah, not not really. Uh, this uh, I met some friends, you know, but mm -hmm. yeah, after all these years, when you go home, you know, you 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 don't you forget about. Them. So when you come back to the states. Did you go back to Pendleton or where'd you go? No, uh, they uh, sent my orders when I got from Vietnam. They sent me to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. A little closer to home? 
Yeah, so you know. How much longer in the Marine Corps after? I had about almost, I had almost about a year left. So you you got out of the Marine Corps. Um, I know you were also. We want to talk about this. Is mm -hmm. you joined the the National Guard? Yes. So did, was that right from the Marine Corps? No, or? no. I waited. I came out and got married. Well, first of all, when I came out, I joined the reserves, mm -hmm. and they were down East 9th Street, and they I was in communications down there. And they needed uh, somebody to promote the reserves. Mm -hmm. So I was laid off from my job, so they put me three months on a recruiters mm -hmm. out in Lakewood. So I would try to recruit guys in the reserves. But when, you do, when you're with these regular recruiters, they tell you, you know, this is what you, we'll get you the body. Yeah. I want you to go to your high school and neighboring high schools. Right. I want you to go in that high school and bring your friends in. Bring your friends in. Right. You know, so that's what I did. And then uh, I got, to, uh, by the end of time, I was ready to go back uh, to my regular job. I worked on the railroad at the time. Uh, Sergeant Major downtown wanted to know if I wanted to come back in. I was thinking about it. But he was, you know, I just got married and. He went, well, Okinawa, he said, we could send you there for, for a whole tour. It'd be like 13 months in Okinawa, but you can't take your wife. Yeah. I said, well, you know. But yeah. I, I had a major that was uh, our company uh, commander in the Azul company. He was a rifle. He came out of a rifle platoon company, and he was a real nice guy. And he uh, told me he was, if I got out, put request he was going to go to um, Marine Detachment down on uh, Jacksonville, Florida, Marine Guard right. Detachment. He says, I'll be there. So, you know, put your dr you got a dream sheet you mm -hmm. put in. So I put in for that and I put in for back to Pendleton, but I got uh, North Carolina. But the thing that came out good on that deal is I went on a med cruise for six months. So, so when you, but when you get out of the Marine Corps, how long were you out before you joined the Guard? Uh, several years. Uh, Where I, did you join the guard at? Was it was Tennessee? It Ohio, Tennessee? No, Tennessee was, I was working his job and I met some guys that uh, were Vietnam vets and one of them was in the Corps. So was there a big difference between the guard and active duty? Well, uh, in some ways it was a, lot, a little bit a lot easier, but you know, the training that they inflicted on us was pretty Pretty steady tough. Cause yeah. I yeah, because I went to Boise, Idaho for for tank commander school. I was like the second graduation class up there. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was like they you really learned a lot about right. that tank. And my home station in Tennessee there we had our own we had a new armory and so we had a for our tanks we had like a firing thing right. village, but we used a twenty two caliber. Insert. Shots, right? Yeah. yeah. We used to use those for the mortars. You'd yeah. Shoot them out of the mortars. So, um, what? Any any action with the National Guard, Persian Gulf, or anything like that? Or no, when uh, when that uh, I guess uh, the first golf uh, thing right. was like in '91. I already left the Tennessee because I uh, had, I left after six years. I right. was there, and I come back to Cleveland, and I was in uh, National Guard, Ohio, Ohio Guard. National Guard. And I was a combat engineer. So no deployments under the guard. No, 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 the guard because at that time when the first, like I said, first Gulf War, uh, the Persian Gulf, uh, they only took supply people. Right. No combat right. uh, units went. Yeah. So um, you retired from the guard. So you retired military. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I know you're very active in in some of the veterans groups around the county. Yes. So. Member of the DAV and what other ones? Uh, um, VFW in Brunswick. Brunswick. And Marine Corps League in Brook Park. In Brook Park. Yeah, with and the reserves. Currently, you are the commander of Disabled American right. Veterans here uh, in Medina. 70, yeah, Chapter 72. So, tell me a little bit about what the DAV does. Uh, we uh, do certain things to help uh, disabled uh, uh, veterans in Medina County. We have like little fundraisers. Uh, we have coming up in September is Forget Me Nots. Right. Well, we take all that money that we bring in, supports the veterans in this county. In, in this area. Area. And we have, uh, and we have like uh, Christmas in July. Mm -hmm. Through your office, we get some veterans that are down and their families are down on luck. And we give them gift certificates right. to, for groceries right. at Bueller's. 
And um, any other event we do, Memorial Day Parade, we put I know, you, I know you're big on the parade. You got yeah. the truck out there. I know you guys, you also, um, you, uh, not the DAV, but with mm -hmm. other groups, you do the Honor Guard down at, at Yes, the I do it at my Marine Corps League every seventh Tuesday. I've been doing it for five years now. Right. I just missed maybe one just recently, but um, we go down there, uh, our Marine Corps League from Brook Park, and we enjoy it. These guys really enjoy going down to Spritman Cemetery and they got uh, the uh, last last time they were down there. Uh, they were told by I guess the director down there that they had, we had a lot of comments that we were a good firing detail, oh, one of the best, best down there at the cemetery. Well, yeah, I got to say, you know, just a, a plug. You know, I, I mean, I don't think a lot of people realize. You know, the, the veterans organizations are very active in the communities, yes. but there's also. Uh, a higher organization that does a lot for veterans in Washington oh, as yes. far as, you know, uh, you know, litigating to Congress and, and stuff like that and, and trying to get benefits through for our veterans. And the I DAV mean, is one of the top yeah. ones out there that's doing stuff for but, uh, Like through your office, uh, your office did a lot uh, for me getting a good percentage uh, out and of we my worked claims. through the Disabled American We're, Veterans yeah. for that too, even with our right. office. But I, uh, I really appreciate uh, that, uh, that you have an office like this to help veterans. And the veterans out there need to know they, if you're down in luck or you have any questions, go to Ed's office. And I, I appreciate that. <laughs> we, we try hard in our office. Yeah, I can tell right. You that. I mean, you have good work. But, but what you guys, and I see the flip of that, what mm -hmm. you guys do out in the community is. is is twofold. I mean, we yeah. do a lot of paperwork, but you guys, if there is a veteran in the yes. community that needs, needs, you know, immediate attention, attention. some you guys are, are, are right all there. Over. And, I, and I encourage our veterans, even especially our younger ones, to go out and, and seek these organizations out and join them. Yeah. Um, because it's important, not just for the community, but for the numbers when your vote counts in, in Washington, Washington for right. our veterans. It's That's important. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, you, down in Washington, now you, a lot of your congressmen, senators now, there's very few veterans. Are yeah. veterans. And yeah, you go back 20, 30 years, years and they were almost all, all, all veterans. Were, yeah. You, you there know, was a lot of veterans them, there. It was the congressman or senator or even a president that wasn't right. in the military. So, you know, the military, what do you think it did for you or changed you to get you through life? I mean, what, well, what events or, or what happened to, I mean, did you carry any of that with you? Oh, yeah. Uh, especially like after Vietnam, I was maybe 20. 19 yeah but you felt like you were in the 30s and, right. when, and you grew up right and when you more go, mature huh more mature and when you go with your friends that never been there you couldn't stick with them the only people you really associate with was other veterans because right. they know but anyway it just made me a better person uh i grew up uh responsibility as far as family and uh and my country, and I don't regret ever joining any military or during war or no war. You do it all over again. I you? do it, yes. I, I would do it in a heartbeat, you know. Uh, I should have stayed in, when I had a shot, stayed in the Marine Corps. I should have stayed in there and retired out of it. But, uh, but situations with families and stuff, you know, comes right. up. Can't look back. You know, hindsight yeah. 2020, we'd all be doing something different, maybe. Yeah, right, a little <clears throat> bit different, but I know I would have been in the military. So any words of wisdom you want to give somebody out there as far as if they're thinking about joining the military or uh, joining one of the organizations? or? Yeah, uh, if you're young guys that are out there ready to graduate high school, you looking for a future or something to you know, to do or if you're not going to college or even you want to go to college you can join like the reserves and the guard and you get you to college but it's a good experience for a young person to go through i know we're in war now but it's still it's something that you will never forget or regret if you join the military because they teach you how to grow up and be a man all right, well, with that said, I want to thank everybody for joining us on Salute to Service today. I want to thank Marco Palka, Marine veteran, Vietnam veteran, and Commander of Disabled American Veterans, Chapter 72, for coming. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Ed. Cool.
joining students, and welcome to Career Day. I hope you're excited to hear about all the great things you can do when you grow up. Hi everyone, I'm Emily. I'm super excited to introduce my dad because he's my hero. When I was little, my dad was away a lot, but I was okay with that because he was doing this really important work, driving ambulances in Iraq. Now he's at home, which is great for me because I get to see him every day now. And he's still the biggest hero I know because he tells all the ambulances and the fire engines where to go and rescue people when there's an emergency. I'm so proud of him. He's awesome. He's my dad. If your service-connected disability prevents you from continuing in your civilian career, Voc Rehab offers counseling, training with a living allowance, education, and other services to help prepare you for your next mission.